uh, switched to a lower carb diet and this was, I don't know, a week or two ago or something. And I feel like it's starting to kind of work or it could just be the weather. We've had crazy weather and there's so many variables. It's hard to tell. I refer to them as tumblers, you know, like in a safe or a lock. They have to align for stuff to happen. And uh, I feel like the tumblers aligned today in the sense that, you know, good enough diet, uh, good enough rest. I actually slept about eight hours. Um, started at 9 p.m., so I woke up at like 4 a.m. But, um, no, don't do that. Just chill here. Um, uh, I wanted to exercise or do something, right? But it, it starts to feel very daunting. Um, I don't really have room to exercise. There's potentially places I could go, uh, and I'll look into that. But when it's dark and 40 degrees out, it's kind of hard. My house is completely either impassable or packed, you know. Um, details aren't super relevant. I just really don't have room. Uh, the Another thing, though, is trying to figure out which exercise to do and what my goals should be. You know, do I want strength training? Do I want cardio? Do I want flexibility? Whatever. You know, And you start wanting all of it, and it's like, well, you can't really do that. You know, there's not one exercise that's good for everything. But I did find a thing about um, basically improving oxygen efficiency and it's uh some kind of kettlebell swing thing and you you keep track of repetitions and that's honestly the hardest part for me i don't mind doing the physical part it's keeping track and fighting my own urge to breathe that's going to be hard um i don't have a kettlebell i feel like i can make something though i mean it's like anything heavy with a handle i'll come up with something um, but the room is still an issue and also, I'm a little worried about my form. Like, if I do it wrong, I might hurt myself, you know, screw up my back or something, or my knee. And I have CP on the right side, so I'm not, it's not a good foundation. I'm not built well. Uh, see that deformity there? That's, that's like all over the right side. I feel like it even extends to my face. Like, you can see that there's an uneven hairline and I'm I got like a pretty bent face and you can see that line is the line of where my teeth meet is like kind of tilted so it's all that way and I used to think that this kind of thing was how I slept as like a baby or something but I saw a picture of myself a recent one like not a recent picture of me but one that uh was recently dug out and it showed me like as a baby as my hair first coming in and I still had this so no, I've always been just bent, probably from, you know, the CP. But then again, again, like I said, it's a baby photo. So it might just be genetic because, uh, like, if it was the result of a birth injury. Now, I was born a month early, so there was time for it to, you know, grow in that direction. I mean, apparently I was like this long when I started, something like that. Uh, stories of me fitting inside hands and stuff. Um, so who knows, right? I mean, I mean, who knows? But my point is, I, I, I've, 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 and I've had injuries. You know, I messed up my knee. Um, I've, I've crashed on my bike, several broken bones, that kind of thing. I was, I had a lot more energy, <laughs> and I was younger, and I wasn't as. Uh, anxious so I did stupid things and I caused conflicts that got me injured and stuff uh, but I wanted to talk about it because I can't do anything about it so you know talking about it and putting it up is kind of like doing something you know I don't know one thing I have been thinking about that's probably worth talking about is um, the checklist of people who get it, trying to really, really narrow that down. 
um, the no voting thing and, and various other things. And I, and I need to make that list. Uh, but it was like I saw a video of a guy that was struggling with anger and I feel like I know why he's mad. And it has nothing to do with him. It's It has to do with the cage we find ourselves in. And people are so keen, men especially, are trained to blame themselves. And I'm, I'm, I want to tell the guy, it's like, man, don't. <laughs> it's like 99.9% .9 of your problems come from billionaires. And the decisions and, and policy choices that they have made. Yeah, that's great, Lou. Poop at the edge of the box. He's so clever. He knows that when I'm indisposed, it's time to do something he's not supposed to do. He really knows. And it's, it's, it's adorable, but it's also annoying. Like, he'll do stuff when I'm cooking. He'll do stuff when I'm sleeping. And he'll do stuff when I'm making a video. Because he knows I can't just get up and stop him. Uh, I don't know why he did that. I mean, it's right there. So picky. But then again, you know, I mean, I'm picky too. So it's that's that's a really good important thing about having an, a pet. Everybody needs a pet to and and as an exercise, constantly imagine yourself as the pet. It's not just yeah, you can't do you can't bury stuff on carpet, baby. That's why you shouldn't poop on carpet. Stop that. Stop trying. Thank you. <sighs> Um, uh, you need to like have a pets and think, you know, would I consider this treatment fair if it were aimed at me? And that's, that's an important thing. It's, it's like good to do that. I feel like it's like, it's good training for anybody because basically everybody is going to find themselves in a position of power at some context, at some scale and to not screw it up real bad. Uh, it's it you need to imagine being the target you know you you need to try and be the authority figure that you would want over you you know somebody that's fair and reasonable and uh, measured I, I don't know I it's just try try and you know the golden rule try not to be a dick <laughs> if you don't want somebody to be a dick to you don't be a dick to others uh But I don't know. I'm just. I guess I'm talking because, like I said, I feel like. Yeah, uh, I was going to say that the guy. Uh, I was making a comment. And I was trying to basically I don't have like a post I can throw at him for this. So that means I have a target for writing or a video or something or both. And. Uh, I told him it's hard, though, emotionally. Because it, it's like a laundry list of everything that upsets you most about people. And the checklist of things that you would like a new friend to have. You know, positions you would like them to take. So that you know that you're going to be in harmony. Because that's a real problem. And, and I told him, I was like, uh, it's it's like trying to do an autopsy on your own grandma. You know, it's it's intensely emotionally disturbing. Because it's like, it reminds you of how bad everything is and how much of it is avoidable if people would just organize a little be be empathetic a little be anti-pain and death a little be intelligent a little you know I and mean, it, it really isn't a big ask this this stuff is not mysterious like they say it's not rocket science uh it really all starts with the hedonic ground floor you know ethical hedonism is the way and it should be obvious to everyone, but it isn't. It's like, um, stuff hurts, hurting bad. From there, all you really need to believe is that there are other people who experience hurt and joy and then work towards minimizing hurt and expanding joy, keeping people around so that they feel joy, keeping them alive and healthy, you know? It really isn't hard, but it's apparently 
apparently it's hard. I don't know. It's, it's impossible for me to convey. I can't seem to get it across to people that they need to do, you know, the first thing, the very first thing is don't hurt people and, and don't make excuses for other people hurting people. I, so it's hard, you know, it's very frustrating going down that list. And uh, I guess frustration is a form of anger. So I need to learn to deal with that too. I don't know. I'm just. <sighs> so what's the like. Yeah, I do need to just make the list. I can't really talk about it. It daisy chains too quickly. Speech is a different form of communication. It's like in uh, that movie, The Arrival. They were talking about their aliens written language doesn't represent speech. It doesn't represent sound. So it's a pure communications medium. It's like, why copy one? You know, it's like a redundancy. Now, the real answer is error checking. You know, you can have speech and text. You do both and you have a much greater chance of uh, the information you're trying to convey being conveyed accurately. It's kind of like two factor authentication. So there's a lot of advantages to your right to your written language and your writing system being akin to your speech system. Um, but at the same time, they are substantially different. Oh, what are you trying to do? No, it's not that. Uh, So I need to write it down because I do a lot of my best um, reasoning and, and thinking and stuff because there's a lot of distractions and, and talking is real time and it, it, you, I don't know, it's just harder to deal with. But at the same time, the purity of writing makes some stuff harder to deal with. It's It, it kind of goes to the emotional utility of a diary. You know, it's like writing stuff down and seeing it written makes it more something. And sometimes that, that essence is uh, more emotionally impactful because there's ways to weave around things with speech, you know, de-escalation aimed inward that doesn't apply to writing. I mean, cause you put it down in black and white, <clears throat> but I need to do that. So I guess I'll do that. It's something I can do while I have some energy. Thanks for watching. Good luck.